Hi guys, so I'm doing my last three books of my fall, winter book reviews. And I'm going to start with Criminal Minds, Sociopaths, Serial Killers, and Other Deviants by Jeff Marriott. Now I love Criminal Minds as a show. I mean, I'm not going to talk about all the different changes that have happened this season because I was kind of annoyed with a lot of the characters leaving the show. But um, as a whole, I think it's just an amazing series, especially like the first three seasons um, are really, really, really well done. What this book does is it goes into the different types of serial killers and sociopaths that are out there that are mentioned through the, the show. And um, it takes references from the show and like shows you the characters, um, who the original killers were that the characters are based on. Because in the show, you know, none of the killers in the show are really real, obviously, but they'll talk about like cases that are similar, and a lot of the times they get ideas from actual cases. So um, throughout the book, like it'll do like killers on the road, and it'll it'll mention the episodes where there was killers that traveled with cars and picked up people, and then it'll tell you actual serial killers in history um, that did that and why, and it goes into all their back history and like what makes someone do these horrible things to people and what their, like, growing up, their childhood was like, or what I really liked about the book, because the book is pretty gruesome, it's pretty scary, uh, some of the stuff is pretty graphic, um, but I'm always interested in what makes people do these things, because one of the, the things I hate most in life is when someone preys on an innocent person and um, hurts them for no reason, like, it's not the person's fault, it's not like the person deserved it, that injustice, like, it, it irks me, like, to no degree, like, that's the one thing that drives me crazy um on like a global scale is when people are completely um victimized for no reason what makes a, a regular person regular and a criminal or a killer become a killer like why because i just could never do that to someone i just don't understand how someone could go that far as to kill people and then you know you have these serial killers that are killing like dozens some some claim they've killed hundreds of people like what compels them and at the end it gives you kind of like a little background on the profiling program at the FBI um, and the FBI in general and how it was created and how it's different from the show there's certainly no jets and they're not like barging into buildings with guns um, it's much more of a consulting kind of program in the real FBI it's just a really interesting read if you are interested in the mind behind the killer it's pretty like dark material, um, so it's not for everyone. I would not recommend it for young, younger viewers. And there are lots of books like this um, in the true crime section of your local bookstores. But uh, this one was just a great reference kind of book because it shows you, it just gives you like the background of all like the major um, killers that have happened in history. And most of them are American, and most of them are are from the early 1900s to like the 80s like a lot of the killers had been like arrested and then released or put in psychiatric care and then released and then went on to like kill all these people and I guess like people just like the whole system is a little bit better now in the sense that um like people aren't going to jail for six months then being let out when they clearly have issues um and what that's why there's kind of less serial killers now than there used to be next book is called what Alice knew and it is by Paula Marantz Cohen. It takes a look at the Jack the Ripper killings in England, um, if they were related with the three Jameses, which is Henry James, who was a famous author, um, William James, who was a famous psychiatrist uh, of his day, and Alice James, who was their sister. And the three of them together kind of take on this case. Uh, how they kind of get involved is that um, William is asked to consult on the case he comes to England to consult on the case with these with Scotland Yard, and Alice gets him to let her help him um, figure out who did it because she just ha she's bedridden and she has um, all this time and she just really wants to um, figure it out and she feels like she's smart enough to do that. And then um, Henry James is sort of the um, liaison for the two of them to kind of get into the social circle because they have this theory that um, Jack the Ripper is somehow connected to the society of England at the time and the cultural society and that somehow he um, is not this poor down and out killer but is someone in their inner circle and so yeah like Oscar Wilde is in in their inner circle and it basically looks at that point of view of, of who Jack could be 
And um, it's obviously historical fiction, and it's not a true story, but it does take you into England at the time period and show you the huge class like separation that was going on at the time and what Whitechapel was like in the east in this part of in of the East End and um the area that Jack the Ripper killed in and why maybe he was doing that. Now obviously it's all speculation because Jack the Ripper was never caught. Um but it is a quite the interesting read and I I didn't really get into it at first. It took a while but I was very interested into it at the end and it's basically a great a mystery novel. If you like Criminal Minds and if you like Sherlock Holmes the movie, put those two together and you pretty much have the kind of book that this would be. Um, it's really, really interesting. Uh, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was really well done. And um, to kind of put all that information in one book, she does it in a way that's like very cohesive and very easy to follow. And I really liked it. Okay, and the last book I'm going to review is... Um, the Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stieg Larsson. This is the final of the, um, I'm not going to put the book here because it's really shiny. Um, that's the final of the Dragon Tattoo series. Amazing. I just finished reading this yesterday. It was fantastic. I could not put it down. And they're like big books. Like if you look, they're quite hefty. Um, but they just fly by. Like oh, he's an amazing writer. He creates these two kick-ass characters in, um, Mikael Bloomquist and, um, Lisbeth Salander, like, they are the two most badass characters. I wish they were real, like, I wish, but I hope in the world people like this exist, that really get it to the man and get it to these, like, these criminals that do horrible things, like, her hacking skills and his, like, relentless journal, like, relentless researching and, and trying to go after these people and, and not being afraid to write about like whatever and whatever these horrible people are doing. Um, and to go after anyone, like not just criminals, but like the government. It's just so interesting. And each book of the series is different and unique in its own way. Like the first book is much more about just how men, I mean, the whole series is about how men hate. There's this hatred towards women and they can just be like used and thrown away. Um, in the first book, it's much more focused on that as a as a basis, because uh, and it kind of introduces you to the two characters, the two main characters, which are Mikael, the journalist, and uh, Lisbeth, who's the hacker, um, the girl who kicks the hornet's nest. She's the girl with the dragon tattoo, basically. <laughs> and the first book's like that, and then the second book is much more about Lisbeth's life and um, her life story. And I mean, there's always like multiple levels to the story. It's not just the one, but it's more focused on her and, um, her background. It's a little bit more about Mikel and his talents, I guess, in, in discovering a story. And it's a little bit less about Lisbeth because Lisbeth in this book is basically bedridden <laughs> for the entire book. It's more him that's taking the lead in this book. And I, think after reading all three I think this could be my favorite because what ends up happening is freaking incredible and what they end up doing <laughs> and the effect that they have um is amazing um like the ending is so satisfying to this book um I really, really loved it. I think this could be my favorite. It could be the first, between this and the first one. The first one's just such a good standalone story. You don't have to read the whole trilogy to appreciate it. And it's a real whodunit. Whereas this one is you kind of know who did it pretty quickly. And it's just about how to get them. Like how to really get them. And make them pay for what they did. So those are all my book reviews. I hope you guys like them. If you read them, let me know what you think. Let me know what you liked. Um, if you have read similar books or like have recommendations of stuff that's similar that you liked, please let me know. I think the standouts of everything that I've read over the fall has to be Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, The Physic Book of Deliverance Dane, Water for Elephants, um, and Shiver. I think those four were my favorites out of everything. Um, obviously Harry Potter. If you haven't read Harry Potter, just get on it. See you guys soon. Bye!